Well, hello again, guys. Welcome back to the channel. Hey, we got a little Father's Day deal here. Father's Day gift for my daughter. And that is the Topeak Rack. So now I can take my camera and all that stuff, everything in one bag. I can jump on either bike and go. But I gotta tell you, it wasn't as easy to adapt as what they'd like to have you think. So stick around and I'm gonna kind of show you and tell you what I went through to get that thing mounted up. Well, hello again, Internet. Welcome back to the channel. Yes, sir. We uh, put mounted the Topeak adapter rack onto the EcoTrick rack, and uh, I gotta tell you, it was quite the job. <laughs> it was quite a job. Now, I did uh, uh, fi film it, or I made an attempt at filming it, but it was very, very early in the morning, like, oh, I don't know, about 5.30 in the morning I got up and there was no way I was going to go and wake Michelle up. And so I just went ahead and strapped on my chest mount and went for it. And it, the footage, most of it didn't come out too good. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of tell you what I went about doing. And, and some of the footage that come out, I'll go ahead and put a picture in picture here because you know us cowboys, we're technically savvy like that. And so that's what we like to do. But hey, while we're waiting to get into that, where do we want to go today? I think we'll go up the gravel. We got the fat tire bike with us today. We went ahead and snugged up them brakes to where they're a little better. One of these days, I'm going to take that brake lever and put it on the other side of the shifters and the other side of the control unit here. So I got one finger only to operate that because what happens Basically, you're operating on the end of it with one finger, and that's how I like to do that. I'm just kind of in the habit of doing that. Um, uh, but yeah, we got the fat tire bike with us today, and I, I went and I got this thing mounted up very early in the morning, and uh, it just didn't pan out the way that I had hoped that it would. So, But I took down a little no few notes that kind of let you know what we went through. And, and one of the first things that I did was I, I looked at the way it's actually supposed to mount according to their adaptations. And I knew it wasn't going to end up fitting because it's for a much lighter duty rack than what I'm dealing with here. You know, this is a pretty heavy duty rack. And a lot of e-bikes have that. So these are some things that maybe you're going to end up running into uh, when you go to mount this up. But the first thing I needed to do was figure out about how I was going to mount it. Let's pull over here. Yeah, we got a little bit of shade right here. So we'll... Yeah, I don't... I don't feel like getting covered in ticks, so we'll come to the shade that's right here. But... Uh, the first thing that I did with it <coughs> was uh, had to kind of decide how we was going to go about doing this. And so let's just set that down. What I did was I took some, oh, that's probably 3 16 by inch and a half aluminum stock. And I had that laying around and I just kind of cut that to a rough length. And I uh, center punched the back one here. There's a plate or a, a, a brace that goes across there. And so I, I used a center punch and I, I drilled a hole right in the center of it. And I used a center punch on that and drilled that out. And that was step number one that we did. Now, step number two was get the front piece cut and uh, drill a hole in the center of it you know and we cut them both a little bit on the long side a little bit on the long side we're on 
like I said, we're going to throw some picture in picture on this. This is not the uh, this is not a high production <laughs> video here. <laughs> this is a, a B budget <laughs> production. <laughs> there was no camera people, no actors, just just one foolish old cowboy stumbling along. But uh, we went ahead and we bolted the two pieces. We got some. I had to go up to the hardware store and I got a couple of uh, countersunk machine screws that were a little bit longer than what they had and we dropped them down into you know basically mounted that two little braces on there and then I dropped the back one through the hole and bolted it loosely and I laid it down and then I took some welding clamps and clamped the front one to the braces and then I took everything off and it, it was a little bit fussy getting the things on and off because you had to dig underneath of there and whatnot but what I noticed is that the sides of it lined up with two braces I, my my bike has four long tubes going up the rack and the tubes on the inside lined up perfectly with the edges of the adapter rack. And when I flipped that over, well, I was able to, well, you know what? I'm just gonna let you see kind of what we did there. We'll cut that in right here. So if you look inside here, you've got some room here. And what I've done was I've lined this up and there's enough room here for this head to clear everything in there as long as I keep it in line with this bolt it'll just drop right into there no harm no foul perfect shot so you know you can you can see that there was room there as long as I lined up horizontally them three holes well that groove that's on the side should be a perfect place for that bolt to mount so we went ahead and we put the welding clamps on to the outside pieces went ahead and drilled them holes straight down through the aluminum stock and the bar themselves I did make the the holes a little bit bigger than what a machinist would tell you you should make them reason I did that was so that I would have a little bit of play in there if because <laughs> I'm not a machinist and I, that way I would have a little bit of play in there so that things won't be you know jamming up uh, uh, real hard on me I had to reach back there and make sure I put my rack or my bag back on there Woohoo! I got that rack and somebody come by and see that bag and say hey that was nice man he left that here for me look at this got a GoPro in it and everything uh, well not a GoPro but all the GoPro accessories and everything but we we put that on and we you know we drilled down through there and uh, now the front is mounted up and then we just kind of reversed that to do boy a bunch of mushrooms are growing then we just kind of reversed that to go ahead and and do the back plate could I have got away without putting that back plate drilling it in there yeah I guess I could have but I wanted to raise up the back a little bit so that it would come over the edge of the uh, the back of my original rack. And so we just went ahead and, and added that plate to it as well, rather than have it be, having to be real tight and spinning on there. We just dropped the bolts down into there. All right. Then what we wanted to do was go ahead and cut everything to the final length. All right, so I and I just used the chop saw because I've got I I cut a fair amount of aluminum around there uh, that I've got a, a an aluminum blade a blah 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 an aluminum cutting blade on my chop saw it'll cut the little bit of wood that I cut as well so I just leave it on there but we went ahead and cut that the final length and then we went ahead and grinded everything down and. Uh, once we got it, where we want to go? <laughs> you know, 
that bride of mine is is back at home and, and she's making spaghetti and I have never had anybody spaghetti that was could near touch what she does so I'm not going to keep heading away from home that's for sure we're not going to be doing that uh, but then we went ahead and, and test fit everything you know didn't tighten it up real tight or anything like that and I well okay everything looked like it was going to work and so we took it all off and grabbed probably a 10 year old can of paint well let's hope this works shake it up a little bit it's just rattle can paint and uh, uh, we went ahead and painted it right there in the shop it was kind of pouring rain on and off the entire time so I wasn't interested in going outside probably put too few of coats, too heavy of coats, and too close together when we put the coats on there. But I thought, you know, it is, let's just hop down over this way here. Somebody's been doing that anyway on a four-wheeler. Uh, uh, this is where we had that whole herd of deer bedded down before they cut this all here we run across the whole herd of them all bedded down there but uh, uh we went ahead and uh cut it off the final length smoothed it up and then we started to go ahead and paint it and once we got it painted we just mounted everything up and here's what we kind of ended up with we'll take another stop up here some point but I'm, I'm real pleased with it it's tight it uh, it's just a, a tick off out of parallel with the rest of the rack and boy I tell you I notice them kind of things I notice them things real badly it'll probably get to me and what I need to do in order to remedy that is to go ahead and loosen everything up and just straighten it because if you recall, I said we uh, left everything, you know, we, we drove them holes a little bit big so that there would be a little bit of slop in them, and it's just out that little bit of that slop. But I got to it was it was sort of a pain in the butt to get the thing together, getting my fingers up under there and holding the screw and a washer on there. Uh, fortunately, we used nylon, you know, lock nuts on there so they shouldn't loosen up on me uh, that's one of the things I'm doing right now is I'm kind of testing that out uh, to see yeah but and things are going after that hawk uh, they will go after them boy uh, but let's go ahead and take a look at the end results here that thing geared down you know we talk about the mid drives and the hub drives and People say you can leave the hub drives in, in the upper gears all the time. And I can't. I just I can't allow myself to do that. But yeah, here it is, and it's painted up. You can see where it's just a little hair off. And yeah, the paint scratched a little bit as I was mounting it up because it really wasn't completely dry. But it does serve its purpose. And like I said, I can loosen it up and straighten up that little touch that it's off but it drops right in there. So we're real pleased with it. There's only one aspect of this whole operation that I'm not extremely happy with. And it's just my obsessiveness with making everything better. But if you, if you look at the battery on here and you look at the bag, I can't carry my spare battery in this bag. My other bag that I have, I can put my spare battery on that other bag. Let's get that down there where you can see it. You know, the battery right there, it won't fit. But what I can do is, it's easy enough. If I want to take that long of a ride, I just take this one off, I strap. Take this one off, I strap the other bag onto the rack and be done with it. You know, it's going to really drive me crazy. I'll bet you I'll be out there at 5 o'clock in the morning loosening up one of these and sliding that thing over that little tiny bit. Uh, but we can always, if we're going to use, you know, the, the idea of this Topeak bag here is that I've got all my stuff in here. I've got a small set of tools that I can take care of 
majority of issues that would come up when I'm out on the, on the bike somewhere you know I could probably get it patched together enough that I could get back so uh, and then I've got all my camera gear in there and to me that's pretty important uh, Cause we've got the double mic system in there you know i'm just trying to keep everything together and especially especially now that that beautiful bride of mine is taking an interest in doing some of these videos and and we want to go ahead and uh get get you know her mic'd up well and a lot of times she wants me to do something in there and so we want to have us both mic'd up as we're doing that we're considering investigating other wireless systems that are are two transmitters and one receiver we're we're investigating that a little bit right now but we're going with what we have we had a uh, uh i think richard down in mississippi ripped one outdoors he was i think we'll go up this way here he was talking about technical difficulties and i i guess we had some of that because we when we were on vacation we just got back from vacation uh a lot of these <sighs> And it's going to be a while before this video comes out because we did quite a quite a few shots uh, i actually i got to start back on my cancer treatment again this week and so hopefully i'm going to be able to continue shooting videos that'll be great um if not i think we've got enough videos that i can get through with uh but the but the last ride that we did we shot a video and Michelle was talking about some some subjects. I'm not going to spoil the surprise because we will probably redo that. But we were just using my voice on the helmet. The camera was attached to her, and uh, uh, she keeps the speaker turned down pretty low, and so nothing that I said was coming through. There was one of them technical difficulties that uh, wasn't a problem with the speaker, wasn't a problem with a microphone, wasn't a problem with a camera. It was a problem with the stupid me <laughs> not saying hey this is how we got to set this up uh, so <laughs> that's what i say that uh, uh what what you call a mechanical failure a loose nut at the helm uh, <laughs> but anyway we'll probably reshoot that so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna spoil it about what it was about but uh there we went down the rabbit holes again but you know i do like to have all of my camera equipment with me now and so with this topeak bag and both of my main bikes have the have that bag on them i can go ahead and you know just take it straight into the house it set it rides right there in the house and whoo that was a big old come on get off of me fly big old deer fly come down and smack me there uh uh, yeah, we can go ahead and, and take all the everything right back into the house. It stays right there. That's where I, you know, I, right, I keep it right beside where I charge up my batteries and all of that kind of stuff. So we're in good shape on that now. And I can always take some water with me. I'm not today. But uh, for the most part, I generally will take a drink with me as well. So we're in good shape. What else is going on? Well, right now, yeah, you ain't going to believe this downloaded Kamut again <laughs> somebody told me if you uninstall it and reinstall it it'll work I don't think it will and I think I'm just going to go ahead and buy my next year's ride with GPS early just so I can quit playing around with that dang Kamut <laughs> but I don't know we'll see but you know that's going to do it I just I wanted to kind of give you guys a heads up on that Topeak uh, adapter rack that you may have to do a little bit of little bit of extra work there if you've got a rack from your e-bike manufacturer a lot of them racks are pretty thick and these things are set up more towards the older racks that were thin tubes small go on a regular bike made to be lightweight because hey let's face it they're regular bikes and you don't want to add a lot of weight to them uh, that's what they're built for but they can be adapted to these bikes just as well and it's not that difficult really uh, to do but I did want you to know what you'd be getting yourself into with it. So I think that's going to do it on this one here. Uh, I think I'm going to take another loop around there just, just for giggles. But I believe that's going to do it for this one here, Internet. So 
hey yeah this is southern e-biking telling you stay safe god bless and keep the wheels turning once again we're out